welcome everyone. My name is Matt O'Hara and I'm the chair of the history department at UC Santa Cruz. And it's my great pleasure to welcome all of our graduating history majors, classical studies majors and Jewish studies majors to this celebration. I'd also like to welcome your families, friends and supporters who might be watching today. Now, first, let me say this is certainly not how we would have chosen to celebrate your accomplishment. But the fact that we're doing this remotely does nothing to diminish the significance of your achievement or how proud we are of what you've accomplished at Santa Cruz. In fact, quite the opposite. Any, anyone who's graduated this year, and I think this is abundantly clear to, to everyone, anyone who's managed to finish their degree in a year like this one should be commended for their determination, their grit, their perseverance. Watching you develop as students and as sophisticated writers and thinkers has been a pleasure for all of us as instructors. And I know it's what, for me, makes being a part of the history community at UCSC such an exciting and a special thing. I also want to recognize that this has been an incredibly challenging year. On the Santa Cruz campus in particular, throughout the world as a result of the COVID pandemic, and now as a result of the sadness, the anger, and the appropriate outrage in the aftermath of the brutal killing of George Floyd. I want to recognize that reality, but I also want to recognize that the skills you've developed and the skills you've cultivated are exactly what we need more of in this world. The ability to think about the world and the past, both from your perspective, but also stepping outside of it, doing that by assessing complex, sometimes contradictory information, making arguments that are built on solid foundations of evidence, and communicating those arguments clearly with style and with force. So there's a lot that needs attending to in the world right now, an enormous amount, but I'm hopeful and I'm confident that you're exactly the kind of people that can do that. So without further ado, let me turn it over to our student speakers for this year, who are Kimberly Sito and Thomas Herz. First up is Kim Sito. Dear class of 2020, congratulations. You've accomplished so much during your time here at UCSC. We've made it through quite a wild year of power outages, strikes, protests, an international pandemic, you name it, 2020. What a year. I hope we come out of this time with a better sense of awareness the events and happenings unfolding around us, whether that be domestically or internationally. I like to challenge us to open our eyes to the world, even if that may be uncomfortable for us. Um, that's where the conversation that needs to be talked about actually starts. Up until high school, we've learned the narratives written into our textbooks, which usually tend to be mostly one-sided. Coming to college, history courses have taught us something different, that the events and happenings of this world have various perspectives. There's always multiple narratives from other people that tend to get lost. I hope you've really thought about and dug into these particular narratives during your time here. Hopefully, in our time at Santa Cruz, we've all become better historians and people from the classroom and in conversations outside of the classroom. Moving forward, I hope that the critical thinking, analytical, and writing skills that we've learned will be put forth in meaningful conversations as we go into our post-grad lives. I challenge you to continue to educate yourselves and those around you because life itself, it's a process of learning and understanding. It never stops. I want you to continue to employ analytical thinking, clear communication, and to actually, most importantly, act on your thoughts. Um, be the change that you want to see in the world. Lastly, I'd like to extend my thanks to Stephanie Sawyer, who has been with me and encouraged me to find myself and my interests. And a huge shout out to Gail Hershatter, Alan Christie, Noriko Asso, and Benjamin Reed from the Politics Department for pushing me out of my comfort zone to become a better me in and outside of the classroom. 
a must to have had the opportunity to have worked with and gotten to know you guys. You've all inspired me to continue to have a conversation about history in a worldly modern day context and to formulate my own thoughts and views on various issues, past, present, and future. Um, once again, um, congratulations class of 2020. We've made it. Keep running like we do to catch the buses here in Santa Cruz. Thank you. Greetings to you, the class of 2020, congratulations. Together we have completed a big leg along our life journeys. My name is Tommy and I am truly honored to be given the opportunity to address you all. I know this is not exactly the celebration that we all anticipated, but we should still be incredibly proud of ourselves. We have overcome so many challenges both individually and as a collective student body. And now, well now we are faced with a future that is brimming with uncertainty. Most all our grad plans have flown out the window and many of us have lost jobs and are now facing career entry setbacks. However, despite all this, I do find solace in the confidence I have in us, the history students of 2020. We have immersed ourselves in a field that knows no bounds save for the present. Every historical topic that can be explored is subject to infinite interpretations and articulations. As a result, the field of history tends to attract the type of learners who hate restrictions that keep their critical thought contained. History attracts the deep thinkers, the ponderers. We were lucky enough to have learned the art and value of pondering from our history professors who were not only invested in their research, but genuinely loved to teach. As an aspiring teacher, I respect that quality immensely. We all have had an experience with a favorite professor that has shown their genuine care about our learning experience. It could have been a makeup class held by Professor Lazar over coffee at Lulu's, or it was a post-lecture conversation with Professor Asso discussing how to best assist us in our specific situations. Or maybe it was even catching some grief from Professor Christie for your poor decision in wearing a Yankees hat in his class. All of these experiences show that our history professors really care about connecting with their students and ensuring a positive learning experience. Those are moments I hope never to take for granted and that we can carry with us in our future careers. Throughout our fast few years at Santa Cruz, uh, all of us as history majors have been pestered by questions along the lines of, what do you even do with a history major in the real world anyway? Well, I would argue that in the real world today, history majors are desperately needed. We have spent our college careers interpreting past events and getting to the root of why things happen and what motivations or biases sway people to have made the choices that they have made. From sitting through lectures and sections with you all, I have had the privilege to work with learners who appreciate thorough discourse and debate in order to broaden their own knowledge and who value the importance of memory and story. These skills and values are directly applicable today. I truly have faith that the students of the humanities will be the ones to institute social change in the world. It is our privilege to be able to remember those who put the work in before us, and it is our responsibility to be the ones who put in the work today. From now on, we represent each other as proud graduates of history, the Ponderers. Once again, congratulations to the class of 2020. Our faculty speaker for this year is Assistant Professor Ben Breen. Ben's research focuses on the history of science, medicine, and technology and globalization, running all the way from the early modern period up through the 20th century. So please join me in welcoming Ben Breen. Ben, take it away. Hello, graduating history seniors. My name is Ben Breen, and I am an assistant professor in the Department of History. And I want to begin by acknowledging the tragedy of the death of George Floyd and of everyone who has suffered violence at the hands of the criminal justice system and institutional racism in this country throughout its history. Many of you are angry or sad or just plain distracted, and I understand, I am too. But what I wanna talk about today is about the ways that I personally find hope in history in moments like this. And I hope that they might be useful to you as you leave the university and enter your lives beyond it. And there are two really important lessons that I think we can gain from history in times like this. The first one has to do with a famous quote by the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, the one about the moral arc of the universe being long but bending toward justice. And if you're a good history major trained in history, you should be skeptical when you hear quotes like that, any kind of quote about history going any direction. because. History doesn't bend in certain directions. 
History is made by people. It's not an entity that exists outside of human beings. And anytime we have a teleology of history, some kind of belief that it's going in one direction inevitably, we should be skeptical. Uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates, who in addition to being a great writer is an excellent historian, has expressed skepticism about this very quote. He says, I don't think you have to believe America is chained to its past and is necessarily doomed to reenact it. But when you study civilizations, it tends to be true that history has a weight, a gravity. If you're going to go in an opposite direction, you need to consciously exercise an opposite force. So what he's saying is, I think, very true. It's that we can't expect that history will go in a better direction. We have to make history go in a better direction. And so the second part of what I'm going to talk about very briefly today is about that. But just to start with, I do want to express what I think is some truth in the idea that history can be a guide and a, and a way of seeing how far we've come. So if you will, just imagine a sunny summer day in California exactly 100 years ago today, in June of 1920. This is a world where women cannot vote. This is a world with incredible racism expressed openly. 61 African Americans were lynched, publicly lynched, in the United States of 1920. It's also a world in which the worst pandemic in human history had just occurred in 1918 and 1919. Two to 3% of the global population had died in those years. And so if we look back at how far we've come over 100 years, I do think we can find some cause for hope. And I find some solace in that although we cannot allow that to make us complacent about the present. And to that end, um, the other thing I want to talk about is the ways that I think history is not just a way of feeling good about the present by observing the awfulness of the past, although sometimes it is that, but history is actually a way of changing the present. And I really didn't understand this until after I left college myself. When I was in your shoes, I was 22 years old, I just graduated, I was looking for a job in a very difficult time, so I feel a lot of sympathy with those of you on the job hunt right now. It was 2008 during the financial crisis. I had been laid off twice in a few months, and I finally found a great job working as a legal assistant at a union law firm in New York City. But I was quite disappointed, to be honest, when I started work there and I realized that my job, it appeared, was basically just going through huge stacks of photocopied papers super boring. It was like 500 pages of paper that I would have to go through and make a little spreadsheet out of and then summarize. And for many days I didn't understand what the point of it was. It didn't really seem important. Slowly though, I began to realize that what I was doing was a kind of historical research. And the really exciting thing is that this was historical research that actually was applied to people's lives. What I was doing, it turned out, was going through a bunch of documents from a very large, kind of evil electrical company, so picture PG&E, and that company had systematically underpaid its janitorial workers and other maintenance workers. So people who were very um, underpaid to begin with were being effectively cheated out of their overtime pay by this large company. And what my job turned out to be in those weeks was effectively what we try to train you to do in history classes, I think. I was going through a huge mass of primary source documents, these employment paperwork, and I was trying to find the relevant data in, that, in those documents. Then I was having to turn that data into a, an argument, and I was con trying to convince people that the argument was valid. In this case, what I was doing was finding evidence of systematic underpayment of these employees and then contacting them and saying you have a legal case here you have an ability to sue this company and get back the wages you earned and i had to be convincing in the way that i framed that information in in a real sense i realized i was doing history but the history i was doing was not just to get a grade on a paper in a class it was actually in a very small way but a real way to do justice to get back the back wages that these people were owed and that they had been unfairly deprived of. And as I continued through my adulthood, through my 20s, 
I began to see many ways in which historical research can have that effect. One other one, a very important one, um, that I encountered later was a, a death row lawyer who had actually saved his client from execution by doing historical research into the relevant documents that proved that this person who had been accused of murder was innocent. And you might be thinking, okay, that happens sometimes, but that's not what history majors do, right? Yes, and in fact, it's true that both of the cases I mentioned are legal cases, but that's exactly the point. We can't do this kind of work without the, the resources and the skills that we learn as historians. And more than this, I really think that history has a huge and maybe even central importance when it comes to trying to learn from our mistakes and improve. Because history is the memory bank of our species. History is our way of remembering our own mistakes collectively. And we remember in order to reflect on past failures. We remember in order to do better. History isn't the only path toward improving the world, but I genuinely believe it is a path. And so if you do, in your careers and lives after this university, find any way to use those skills that you were taught in art classes, I will be genuinely thrilled because I really do think that in your own ways, all of you have the potential to make the world better with the skills you learned. And it's my great hope that you do so. For me, that's the greatest source of solace and hope that I can find at this moment. Now, with that, I just wanna say congratulations again to all of you for everything you've achieved. It's an incredibly difficult year and you've all done an amazing job weathering the storm. And I'm so proud of all of you. And I think I speak for all of my colleagues and all of the staff of the history department when I say, we think you did an amazing job this year. And we're really, really proud of you. And I wish I had graduation robes to wear. Um, let's see if I do. You might have guessed these are not actually graduation robes. The fact is, I didn't actually buy any during my own graduation. So I'm wearing my wife's mortarboard hat and a little blue t-shirt. But to make up for that, I've actually found my cat Cosette wearing her own graduation robes. So I hope you enjoy. And I just want to say again, congrats everyone. You should feel really happy. Bye. Well, thank you, Ben, and thank you, Kim and Thomas, for those great remarks. Um, now I want to say something to the graduates as a whole. We want to welcome you to a new community, a community of History Department alumni. As I've mentioned, we're extremely proud of what you've done here, and now we want you to go out into the world and continue to do great things in Santa Cruz and beyond. But we also hope that you'll stay in touch and continue to make your way back here to reconnect with us in the History Department in future celebrations. I'm gonna give the final word to my history department colleagues who have a few things that they wanna to say too. This is Matthew Lassar saying, congratulations. Don't worry, I'm not gonna give you any advice, but think about it. You got through this, right? So what could stop you? So keep in touch and let us know what you're gonna do next. Congratulations to the historic class of 2020. Hello there, class of 2020. Uh, we thought we would be teaching you history, but in fact, you're living history. Uh, best of luck going forward. Congratulations to the graduates, family, and friends of the class of 2020. You survived a tough school year. Hope you can celebrate it. Keep safe, stay healthy, and keep in touch. Hi, class of 2020. I'm sad we can't be together today to celebrate all of your accomplishments, but I hope you're taking some time to do that. And I hope you will stay in touch and come back often to visit us at UC Santa Cruz. You'll always have a home in the history department. Congratulations. This is usually one of the most special times of year for me 
when I have the really wonderful opportunity to meet your families and to join them and my colleagues in celebrating your graduation. This year is of course different, but I still wanna express my congratulations to you and to convey how much I have learned from teaching many of you. Going forward, you will need to make use of all the skills you've developed here, how to read and think critically, how to write in a persuasive and compelling way, and how to understand events such as the one we are all contending with in a historical context. Most of all, you, your friends, relatives, and communities will need all the creativity you can muster. The virtual graduation is one small instance of creativity, but there is so much more to be found. Again, congratulations to all of you in the class of 2020. Hey, history grads, congratulations. I'm sorry that we can't all get together and celebrate in the way we would prefer, but it's been a great pleasure and a privilege working with so many of you in my classes the last few years, and I really cannot wait to go see what you all accomplish out there in the world. Best of luck and many, many congratulations. Hello, class of 2020. This is Professor Katherine Jones. I'm so happy to have the opportunity to congratulate you all on this remarkable accomplishment. We are really proud of all that you have achieved, especially that you have done so in the face of really extraordinary obstacles. We're sorry we're not able to gather together to celebrate, but we hope that you'll mark this important achievement with those around you and find ways to celebrate all that you have done over the past few years. Um, in the meantime, please stay in touch we want to know where life takes you in the next few months and in the next few years. And we'll hope that you'll come back and celebrate with us in person just as soon as we are able. Um, but in the meantime, stay safe. Um, and please know we are proud of you um, and excited for all that you're going to bring to the world. So congratulations to you all. Um, and we will see you soon. Greetings to the class of 2020. And congratulations on making it through an, a truly extraordinary year. I think you'll have something to tell your grandchildren about one of these days. Good luck in the coming year. Dear class of 2020, congratulations on graduating. I've had such a wonderful time getting to know many of you over the past four years, and I know you're going to go on to do wonderful things after your time at UCSC. So I know this quarter has been a wild ride, but you made it. Congratulations. Hi, class of 2020. This is Alice Yang congratulating you on getting your degree after a very challenging and historic year. You should be proud of all your achievements and all the skills that you've demonstrated here at UCSC. And these skills, to read critically, to think analytically, to write clearly, and to speak persuasively, will serve you well in whatever career path you choose. So take care, keep in touch, and go out and celebrate. I wish we could celebrate together, but this will have to do until you come back to campus. Congratulations, UCSC History Department graduates. I'm sorry we can't all be together today to celebrate your big day, but I wish you all the best in your future. Congratulations, class of 2020. To all the history majors in the class of 2020, I've missed having the chance to work with you in person this quarter and to celebrate with you and your families in person now. It turns out, as you and all of us are finding out, that it is very challenging to live through a world historical event. But I have confidence in all of you in your abilities to weigh evidence, analyze, interpret, and figure out how to move forward wherever life takes you. Congratulations to all of you. Warmest congratulations, class of 2020, on completing your degrees under the most difficult circumstances imaginable. We applaud your courage, your creativity, your resilience, and we wish we could have celebrated with you in person. Congratulations, graduates. I uh, wish that I had some wisdom to lay on you, but I don't, and it's Monday, June 1st, and I'm feeling pretty dark about the world. So the only things that I can tell you right now are the things that I wish for myself every day. Number one, I hope that you fight for a better world and one that is guided by justice. Number two, 
I hope that you use your knowledge of the past and everything that you've learned in your four years here to make a better future and to have an imagination about what that future can be. And finally, I hope that your actions in this world are guided by a fierce love and a sense of possibility that the world that you live in can be a different world and that you can play a role in that. So good luck and be well. Hi, I'm Noriko Aso. And I'm Alan Christie. And we're the historians of Japan and East Asia. So I know it's hard not to think about the future right now, but I want you to take a moment to pause and think about your achievement and be proud. And welcome to the Fellowship of Historians. It's going to serve you well. Congratulations. Congratulations, class of 2020. It has been such a pleasure getting to know each of you over the past several years. And I'm so incredibly proud of all that you have accomplished during your time at UC Santa Cruz. As your advisor, it is my prerogative to give you one last piece of advice. So here it is. Have confidence that you're prepared for whatever challenges come your way. Even though the future seems fraught with uncertainty, probably more so now than it did at the start of the school year, remember that your training in the history department will see you through the most difficult of obstacles. Your ingenuity, your tenacity, and your character inspired me every single day. And I know you will reach whatever goals you set out to achieve. So go forth with the congratulations and the support of the department. And remember to stay in touch. We genuinely look forward to hearing about all the incredible ways in which you are using your degree to change our world for the better. Thank you.